Hi, my name is Laquanda Jefferson. I'm a psychotherapist here in the Atlanta area, and I would like to welcome you guys to the third segment of my October broadcast. So this pretty much wraps it up. Thank you, thank you, and thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for your patronage. Thank you so much for your love and your support. If you watched all three segments, you rock times two. I really, really do appreciate it. I am 100% committed to um, growth and elevation of people um, and, of course, the proper healing, emotional, and mental stability of people, the growth and empowerment of people. So um, this particular segment, and of course, I will reiterate the purpose of my splitting up my October broadcast into three separate segments. The idea is that there are three separate topics that highlight the month of October, and all three of them are very near and dear to me. I am, of course, a social justice advocate, psychotherapist, life coach, and consultant for businesses all of these wonderful things. I wear several hats. However, um, the one thing is with me, I like to highlight and I like to push and promote those things and bring about awareness for those things that personally resonate with me. I like to share information with people and I like for people to be elevated on a whole different level. I am personally, this self-disclosure piece, a breast cancer survivor and I'm claiming it because that's just what it is and that's what it will be. I was initially diagnosed in 2009, shortly after I gave birth to um, my set of twins. And um, I think it was maybe like three months after uh, the birth of that set. So <sighs> this is personally um, identifiable for me yet again. And I feel like oftentimes people don't know what breast cancer looks like. Um, my breast cancer is metastatic because it's current and, you know, it's gone from um, being very aggressive to being in remission and then the same, you know, back and forth. The person that is afflicted by this disease, because that's what it is. Um, lives a life that no one outside of that spectrum can even begin to fathom. And it's difficult oftentimes to be the person that lives this life simply because you know that you have a, a girth of support around you and people have absolutely no idea what you're going through, but they, they furthermore don't know what to say. And that in itself can be extremely difficult. So what I want to urge you guys to do is to become educated. Find as much education as you can about um, the process of cancer and the options for treatment and other holistic options outside of um, treatment for cancer that, you know, these people can take advantage of and kind of weigh their options before committing to um, radiation therapy or whatever um, medicinal, medicinal or chemical treatment they may have um, suggested by their practitioner. I think being educated about it, being educated about the stages of cancer and the phases of cancer and what it looks like and what life looks like for that person can help you cope with it because those people on the outside of the illness, they need help as well and they need support as well. And your support sometimes isn't the person who is going through it because we have a whole separate battle of our own to go through. Know this, you are appreciated for everything that you do when you are a support lens for that person, but also for the people who are going through it, be inspired and be empowered because at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be the end of your day. So what I'd like for people to do is to not say, oh, I'm so sorry, and to feel sorry for people. I like for people to know that, you know, it is more important for you to be a source of empowerment and for you to be um, just a real shoulder to cry on if you, you know, if have you, um, for that person when they do need that. But 
you know, being educated about it is everything. And it could be just you simply having a conversation about, oh, well, you know, I know that you're hurting today because I know you. And not necessarily associating the illness with everybody else um, for them. Because what one person goes through, it, it doesn't necessarily have to affect every single person the same way that has cancer. Okay. The way that one person responds is not necessarily the way that, you know, that person that you are affiliated with will respond to this illness. And most importantly, support is needed. But you can't necessarily ever know what a person is going through. Okay. So saying, I know what you're going through can sometimes be a little bit more detrimental than you just asking, what can I do? So be a, um, a source of empowerment, go out there and raise awareness, um, raise funds for these various campaigns that support the research and the growth and the awareness efforts for cancers of all types. And um, be you and be true to you because the moment that that person can see that there is a spigot of falsehood in you and the way that you represent yourself in their lives, um, that could pretty much be the end of that relationship for that time period because it's difficult to go through um, any terminal illness. Anything terminal is difficult to go through. However, knowing that you have a very strong support system that's there for you and that's honest with you and that is 100% committed to you still having your life is everything, okay? So again, I want to thank you guys so much for um, watching this video. If it personally resonates and you know somebody who needs it, which is pretty much everybody because everybody needs to become aware, cancer is a global issue. And at the end of the day, um, you know, people are not outside of the affect of cancer. You know, it's not something that you can avoid simply by being a certain way. Okay. So um, that concludes that part of the segment. And I will now go to my relationship tip of the day. Okay. So um, I had a printed it out <laughs> so I could have it. Um I didn't I didn't pick that one. Okay, so this question comes from um we'll say Alyssa so that we can use a false name because you know I'm all about privacy and protecting people's um right to that privacy, right? Um, so Alyssa writes to me, um, she says that, Doc LQJ, I am concerned that my husband is cheating on me. He comes in at odd hours and is often missing for all of the events for our families. I want to talk to him about this, but I'm afraid that if I talk to him about this, he is going to leave me. His behavior has been been this way ongoing for seven months. We have been married for seven years. Wow, seven months and seven years. Uh, excuse me, and we have three children. What do you say? Well... My first question would probably be, have you guys tried psychotherapy or counseling? Did you, uh, did you um, take part in premarital counseling outside of um, religious or spiritual guidance prior to marriage? Did you take part in some empirically grounded um, therapy mechanism or counseling? Because this, uh, what it does is it prepares you know, both parties for the probability of these types of, of conversations. And it makes, um, it helps to create a safe space for communication. So what I would advise is that, you know, you 
decide to have a conversation with him about it, uh, an intimate conversation, not involving the kids, arrange for a sitter of some sort or family member to come and watch the children so that the two of you can talk about what has been transpiring in his life and, um, you know, some of the changes and even talk about some of the things that are going on in your relationship. Oftentimes people lose the importance of evaluation when it comes to relationships because they're no longer dating and they're married now. When you are married, you should still do a complete and comprehensive evaluation of your relationship because what you're doing is you're rating where you are and where you're going and whether or not you're on track to getting there. Um, so that expectation lens is everything. If you, those expectations that you have and have developed over the course of the relationship are going uncommunicated to your partner, then normally um, you have situations like this. So um, that's what I would suggest, you know, just sitting down, having a very fluid and transparent conversation, but also making it safe for him to communicate. So um, maybe initiating the conversation with, well, we haven't really been that close in communication with one another as we are normally, or we've never been a really huge communicating couple. But I thought it'd be great if we started that today. So let's start off by having a very fluid and honest conversation about what's going on in our relationship and in our personal lives um, and how we can possibly improve and where we're wanting to go from here. So that in itself can make people extremely comfortable, especially if they have, you know, potentially have an affair to disclose. Um, also, I would suggest your suggestion that you guys see someone, you know, and talk about some of your feelings and your thoughts and your emotions. And please do not be accusatory when you have this conversation, because here's the thing. Men often interpret the we need to talk conversation as a serious conversation and there is an accusation coming behind it. And oftentimes they're correct. <laughs> but um, the idea is to create space for growth. Infidelity is not the end of relationships. Oftentimes it can be the beginning of something great. So um if you have watched other videos that I have released on that topic, um, that gives you a lot of insight. And I am also gonna have to say I'm a little bit biased to psychotherapy, being the fact that I'm a psychotherapist, right? So <laughs> that's that part. I, I hope that helps. And um, again, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this complete segment because I know it probably took a lot out of your um, day. I'm normally under 30 minutes with everything and I, maybe this is like 45 minutes with everything or so. Um, but again, thank you guys. Thank you for supporting me. If this resonates with you or someone you know, please do like, subscribe, and share this video. I think I said that. And also like follow me on other social media. You can find me anywhere by using the hashtag DocLQJSpeaks. D-O-C-L-Q-J-S-P-E-A-K-S. Okay? Later days, folks.